Hello, I'm Guillermo Del Toro, and I welcome you to uh, the uh, presentation of the short Mama. The short is what uh, called my attention to Andy Muschietti and Barbara, his uh, sister and producing partner and co-writer, uh, because the short was essentially one of the scariest uh, little scenes I've ever seen. And uh, it was also incredibly well made. It was uh, planned as a very uh, limited type of uh, short, uh, very claustrophobic, really atmospheric, really, really scary. The idea of two girls that have a relationship of love and fear with a ghost, the ghost of a mother, was uh, presented in the short very, very economically with only a few shots. One of them is a very, very long shot that is actually composited out of several shots pieced together seamlessly digital. Um, and uh, you're going to see this. Uh, you're going to see the craftsmanship, the ingenuity, and the horror that made me want to come in and produce the feature version of Mama. Not so bad. Welcome to Sephir. <laughs> mm. mm. What room do we cr 
person first? Um, well, how about this one? <laughs> Joe. Joe. Listen. Uh, with all respect, uh, there's no way those kids are ready for this, huh? I mean, a little one speckly an animal, for Christ's sake. It's my case, Joe. Give me so. Back off. Uh, look, let, uh, let's at least place them with foster parents who know what they're doing, huh? I saw the psyche valve of the woman, Anna Bill Moore. She doesn't have any interest in kids. Right? She feels totally trapped. Give her three months, we'll be lucky if she doesn't beat those kids half to death. Oh, she'll be great. How's uh, the book coming along, huh? Because that's what this is all about, right? Write a book, get yourself on Oprah. That's exploitation, Gerald. Of Dessange and more. Not to mention the children. You know what? Take this as fair warning. Unless you rescind your decision, I'm going to go to the Ethics Committee. Still slipping a length of that grad student, Charlie? Chelsea, was it? How many is that you screwed your way through? Three, four? How would Mrs. Charlie feel about that? I wonder. Hey, you! Handsome! Come here. What is that thing? Huh? Where'd you get this? Nice. It's really nice, girls. How's Lucas? Unconscious. And no news on the uh, intruder? It goes to the girl's state of mind. How have they been affected by all of this? They talk to walls. I'm sorry? They talk to the walls. And what did they say? Mama. Just mama? Yeah, that's the only word I can make out. To be honest, it's really freaking me out. Why do you think they do that? Because they're damaged. Do they ever talk about it? The isolation. No, not so far. And how have you been? <laughs> yeah, I know you're the expert in all this and everything, but you know, there's no way these girls are ready for this. And there is no way that I am ready for this. I told you already, all new mothers say that. Yeah, but I'm not their mom. Victoria? Okay. She's basically okay. She hardly talks. Lily? She's not even housebroken. You smell that pee in here? You think that's me? It gets a fucking Wolverine. So, what are you asking me to do? I don't know. Describe her like drugs or something. Absolutely not. Did you not hear me? She pees on the carpet. Tomorrow she could be chewing glass. If I were you, I would discipline her. Now you sound like my mom. She's also a bitch.
A mother is a great idea as a monster because everybody has known a possessive mother, whether it's your own mother or a friend's mother. Alfred Hitchcock, in all of his films, probably half of them featured really, really horrible mothers. They are great figures of horror. I love good ghost stories uh, where the character of the ghost has some traits that are something human. You know, I always say that ghosts are like the loop of one emotion playing over and over again. And in the case of Mama, that emotion is love, possessive, asphyxiating love. We did not want this to be just a genre film where there's a spook here and there and, you know, it's just a you know, a zombie or a ghost that just comes out at the right time. There's a backstory to Mama. The goal was to make a movie as, as scary as, as touching and emotional, and I think we made it. The film is finally our chance to be able to tell a good horror story. The short film was really exciting to watch because I loved the shot, you know, with the staircase, you know, the kind of the one-shot model for it. It's almost like you could feel them, and it's, a, it's very unique in his way of using the camera. In the first 10 seconds, you have an idea if there's a narrator. And with Andy, it was very clear that he had constructed that short with a beginning, a middle, and an end. The two elements that, there, that were there were a little girl and a ghost, and there was a chase involved, and it would be a POV and a, and a, and a sequence shot, you know, one or... The formal approach of making it look like two shots was not just a, a formal showmanship thing. He really understood the drama. Little tiny things he added in a three minute short, that, okay, it's not just a, it's not like for cheap scares. There's not just a lot of loud, noises that scare us. It's a really scary, well thought out three minutes. Two things that motivated the idea of making a movie, the scariness of the shots itself and the idea and the question mark of uh, what's that story about. In the short, Mama is just a tool. But in the film, we had to give her an arc and a reason why and try to see how we would make the audience empathize with this creature. The good thing about working with, with my sister is that we've seen the same movies and we have the same references. Uh, and we are spooked by almost the same things. We've always done this thing since we were kids of trying to figure out what was scary, where was fear coming from, and it was always going to the unnatural, you know, something that goes against nature. The best horror movies are the most intense thrillers I always hear, any movie in a way, is when you kind of connect with the characters and when you identify with them. We believe in characters. We really think that that's what makes a movie. Doing a genre film like this, the intensity is always so high, it's a different kind of acting. And I always want to do a film that challenges me. But because I go blind, I have to fall like this because I have to match. The basic idea was that Anna was uh, a reluctant hero to basically take care of two little girls and, you know, resign to her life as a 30-year-old teenager. <laughs> I approach every film like it's a drama. I approach it like, like they're real people and I have to you know, great responsibility to portray them. Lily, honey, you okay? Huh? Uh, how did you get out here, huh? Megan and Isabel, we're lucky that we found them, you know, because it's, uh, it wasn't easy, a very easy road. You can't do that. Why? Because she gets jealous. My play, Victoria, 
the oldest of the two girls, and she's kind of shy at the beginning, and she really grows a close bond with Annabelle. I play Lily. I'm a little bit scary. Isabelle, when uh, you know we cast her out of Montreal, she came. She did not speak a word of English. She's been slowly learning, and she's the life of the party. They they have like different arcs, but they both have to go through rough uh, emotional uh, moments, and they have to be credible. Both of them deliver the perfect uh, intensity. The first thing I told Andy is I want the short in the movie. I said to him, that's one of the few conditions I give you, like, we need to make a moment in the movie, the short. There's a couple of ideas in the movie that are there that, that, uh, that were his, uh, he insisted on, on, on leaving them. Because he's the guy that knows how the, the audience reacts, and he always tries to put himself in the place of the audience. The one thing I love about the way we transitioned into a feature film is Andy was very, very particular about how much he wanted to show Mama, or rather how little. The short film is very effective because it's only three minutes and it's all there, you know? And it starts, it builds tension and suspense and then the scares occur. In a movie, even though you try to to keep a structure that works like that, you have to go through different structures of tension and releases and, and then build again and scare and then go back to zero. He restrained the, how many times we showed Mama, but he shows her enough that you feel satisfied. You're, you go, oh my God, that, that thing is really scary. <laughs> This house, courtesy of the Institute, is used for case studies, rent-free. You move to the house, you get the calls. The only thing that I feel translates from the short to the feature is obviously the general feel of Mama and the idea that a good chunk of the horror happens in a, an inoffensive suburban house that is not a creepy castle or an abandoned mansion. And Andy was very specific about, I don't want the house to be like a creaky Victorian house. I want it to feel really almost uh, benign, you know, but rotten. I try to make it as dark uh, as possible. And you can see that uh, in, in parts of the movie are like that. You try to paint the, the, the whole movie with a, with a certain aesthetic or texture. It's about combining the elements to make it, to make that atmosphere creepy. The color has a palette that is basically based on somehow like in earth tones and as well as the wardrobe and all the sets are all designed in one in very well blending palette. I try to produce a lot of first time directors. When you find somebody like Andy or Juan Antonio Bayona and now and then you go, this guy is the real deal. Well, it's a story with a strong uh, emotional element besides a, a horror film. And that's what generally I, I miss in genre movies. We wanted to make this from the beginning uh, a story that scares you but also like touches you deeply.
normally when you have a prosthetic like this, you pre-paint it. But in this case, we try it and I don't know why it doesn't work because it's like a kind of messy <laughs> makeup, no, with a lot of colors. We have to make it like uh, in, in layers. We cannot put all the colors on, here, on, on, on top. And it, it's what it takes time. We approached uh, DDT for the prosthetic effects because I trust them completely from Devil's Backbone, Pan's Labyrinth, Hellboy, and so forth. And we knew they were going to be able to interpret Andy's ideas for Mama. DDT were great because they really made a, a beautiful translation from my 2D sketches to a real sculpture. We didn't want any um, Seems. seam. So normally you make a mold like with different parts, like a puzzle. From this, we go from center uh, outside and then we end with the back. But it's quite difficult and then you have the edges that also, you know, I mean, you have very good edges, so you want to keep it and you want to glue it. And this is what it really takes longer to, to do because it's like a, yeah. uh, a clock uh, kind of work. You have to be very meticulous and we get really tense when we do that. Andy always saw Mama as a Modigliani painting left to rot. Andy and I, when we were kids, my mom had a Modigliani print in the house. And Andy was very scared of this print. I found it very scary, and I do find it scary today. You know, those uh, elongated faces and, and necks, and uh, you know, the, the, the twisted eyes, and the, the empty look. I haven't seen anything of that, uh, any monster in movies that look like, like a Modigliani. So I said, well, I shouldn't look like that because it scares me and, it, and I'm sure it scares a lot of people. <laughs> Mama's being played by an actor, Javier Bote, a Spanish actor who's, who's very tall and has terrifying hands. He's about 6'8 and kind of thin. They saw Javier walk onto set, and everyone was like, holy shit, this is the real deal. The first time we saw him in makeup, you know, we freaked out. I look at him for like two seconds, and I turn back. I kind of didn't really want to show I was interested, but I was kind of freaked out at the same time. After five hours of makeup, he comes to the set, and we hang him in, <laughs> in wires, and, you know, kick his balls in so many ways. Sometimes that I want to get out the mask, to breathe, to see well, because a lot of time they have very little way to see. Javier is so good with um, the way he moves his body. He doesn't move like, like a normal human flesh and blood person would. What he can create, it really feels like it's from another planet. Thank you. So we knew we had an actor at the center in prosthetics, and then we added the elements of the hair as a floating entity digitally. And, and I think the combination is really great. I, I would never go with just a, a purely CGI mama. They kind of came to us with uh you know, this creepy mama character and her hair, it has that kind of surreal feeling. The underwater feeling kind of makes it feel alive or maybe another creature along with mama. It has the feeling of a uh, hair that is uh, underwater, but the rest of the motion of that character is completely different. And he was very specific about wanting a jerky kind of a awkward motion to her. She's a broken ghost and uh, Along with the watery looking hair, she's got a very damaged figure, and that's what makes it creepy. So it's a, it's a challenging endeavor. It's really a combination of Javier, DDT, Mr. X, and Andy's imagination, of course, to create the character. And we're pretty happy with that group. They did an amazing job. It looks real, it looks living, but the proportions are completely wrong and I was blown away by the result. But most of all, they, they respected the, the spirit very much. It was not only about translating, but the spirit of the spookiness of the Modigliani look translated into a, a monster. 
they did just a great job.